Listen. Let's talk a little bit about how the tools are evolving in general. I mean, uh, I think we've all been in filmmaking for long enough to see s things change quite massively over the past few years, particularly. Um, everybody is an independent cinematographer here working with different tools. And I think also the small tools are getting more and more important. So for, for you, Steve, uh, how does uh, size in your work matter for the type of stuff you shoot? Yeah, like he already said, sometimes you have like topics where it's really important that you get the trust of the people or don't get too much attention from the environment because um, this destroys like the magic moments in the documentaries. They are like really like small butterflies and you really have to be careful that they don't get destroyed. And if, you, if you're coming up like with uh, first AC and um, sound man and, and anybody and you're having like a big team of people and big equipment and it's it's different it's really it's really i think it's i think if you're having small equipment that um, allows you to work in a small team it you get a, a deeper access into the topics of your of your documentary for example and i think the quality of the of the documentaries of the stories becomes better and also the portability because sometimes it's also um, you have to travel to different countries yeah, yeah. <coughs> or to places that you can't visibly show you have a camera bag yeah. And also, also in terms of money, I mean, any, anything you have to you have to carry, you need people to help you and anything, so it raises up the whole pr uh, project budget. And maybe some years ago, you needed maybe one hundred thousand dollar to make a documentary feature film. But those days, you can make a good documentary feature film for ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar. Of course, maybe you have to improvise, but it's possible. You you mm -hmm. can take less money and make and make something and if you have the tools and that's why it's an yeah. ex uh, exciting time here. Yeah. I also like the point that you raised with um, the amount of technology that you have to you're confronting your subjects with no matter if it's fictional or documentary I think it makes a whole lot of difference how they act in front of the camera because if you, if you confront them with a face of technology uh, like a, a wall of technology yeah. it's a whole different thing as opposed to having a small camera. Yeah, yeah, you can you can even see, especially especially in documentary, you can see if you if you're showing up with uh, fancy equipment that that looks like professional equipment, they the people change. Especially in documentary, they they don't some of them don't behave like they would behave because they they take you serious. They think maybe you're working for TV and anything. Yeah. But if you're showing up with a small camera like this, and uh, they some don't take it serious. They they think okay, he's just doing some photos and maybe he filmed for himself. So you have much better better uh, entrance into the. It's a good point. Community. Actually, it, it depends what you need. Sometimes I found it's beneficial to just claim that you're from a TV channel from another country. Yeah. And then you do get access to yeah. people that you would not have gotten access to. Yeah, this is also a topic. Yeah, you you can oh, have I access. I did that. To it's, more <laughs> more, it's, more <laughs> <laughs> it's more and more dangerous though. Well, it depends it. how far the country is away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, if you want to come back, yeah. Yeah, but it's not, it's not just documentary stuff. Um, uh, I had a recent shoot where we had to work with child actors, and that was one. They were kind of semi-professional, but still, you know, starting out. And, you know, once you pull that big camera out in front of their faces, you know, it just directing becomes so much harder. But when you're able to move, you know, almost play with them, move with them, be able to really just qui quickly improvise. You get so, such such more authentic s situations with them. And that was one of the best se best examples for me on that shoot. It's like like this really made a huge difference to like to the content, not not to the quality of the image, not to the style of the image, mm -hmm. but to the actual content of what I was able to get from the from yeah. these child actors. Which is the most important yeah. thing. Play yeah. is a very key word. It yeah, could be exactly, a lot more yeah. playful. Exactly. With a camera yeah. like this. Yeah. But but as well, kind of the weight is is, is an issue. Like. When you, for example, run around with, with one person the whole day, you just have this little camera on your shoulder and you just walk around. It's kind of not the heavy camera, which is kind of like after they kind of like, oh, I have to get a massage. And, and so you can go everywhere, do everything. Uh, you feel comfortable. Everyone else feels comfortable. And when you need to shoot, shoot something, you just take the camera. And yeah. then after that, you're a tourist again and walk around. And traveling gets easier as well. Oh, way, way, way. Excess yeah. luggage is our friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe now we get 
uh, money back from the airlines because we have less. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice concept. That would be very yeah. nice. <laughs> um, actually, I just wanted to say, I mean, you shoot a lot of stuff with cars. So you are in very limited, constrained places anyway. So I'm sure it makes a whole lot of difference right there. Absolutely. Right? If, you, if, you, if you want to mount a camera to a car, for example, that, that is a, that's a big thing in, in a small room. And even if you have maybe sports cars, whatever, there's even less room. And um, then it's nice to have a little camera, a uh, smaller camera, but with a, with, a, with a nice lens on, you can change lenses and stabilization is as well an issue. Like when you go bumpy roads, whatever, it's kind of, pff, what's a bumpy road? When you, when you compare it with uh, years ago, like the big rigging you have to do and kind of how, how much time it took and you're so much faster, it kind of things you maybe shot in, in two days before, you now you can shoot in one day. Um, it's really interesting, like this, this car thing, uh, I recently shot this one commercial where we had a fully kitted out gimbal rig, I got two, two ACs, uh, a shooting flatbed truck that we could shoot from, and then after that, about a month after that, I shot another situation and all we had was a bunch of rope, an SUV with the back door open, and the bare bones Olympus, and I'd say I got about like 80% like of some of the shots that I could get with the whole gimbal setup. You know, the price difference in rental was like 3,000 euros. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's, if you know that a certain amount is good enough or you know that you're limited to certain shots like front shots and all, you can pull off some pretty crazy stuff with just a bit of improvisation. Yeah, you can try a lot yeah. of new things like yeah because you just grab the camera, it's like, okay, let's yeah. drive and let's see, so, oh, it looks good, yeah. or it looks shitty, and then, but at yeah. least you didn't lose lots of time, just five minutes, it's like, okay, uh, let's I'd, continue. How do you end up trying stupid things like, you know, hanging it out the, you know, really low next to the road? Exactly. Because it, it's not like a $50,000 camera. Uh, yeah. Still, you don't want to lose it, but. Yeah, but, but it's like more of a crash cam mentality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not only cars, it's, uh, I made some test shoots a few weeks ago, uh, because in, for this park bench film, I wanted to move through the park, and if you walk, it's too slow because it takes like hours to get anywhere. And with a bicycle, it's complicated. You need somebody who's driving you. And then I, re I, I a friend got this uh, electric uh, skateboard. <laughs> and you can yeah. just uh, you take the camera and you have this little Remote. speed thing in your hand. And then you just, and it has this ultra run four wheel uh, thing. And you just go through the cross. <laughs> I mean, and, oh, and, and, and it looks amazing. smooth. It's, it's wonderful. Sure. I mean, it's, it's really. It's amazing what you can do. How, how, far, how long you need to train to not fall <laughs> off the skateboard? No, I, I was, uh, when I was younger, I was... Oh, I uh, yeah. <laughs> the skates right. are good in skateboard. Yeah, see, okay. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> sure, that helps. So you were mentioning uh, the commercial difference, I mean, the difference on your commercials. I'm just interested in, uh, you know, how it sometimes is with clients. You kind of have to impress them. How often do you feel like you... Uh, does it limit you when you're like... Or are you worried that when you say, well, we should shoot this with the Olympus that they reduce your budget for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the client wasn't there. <laughs> so, okay, that, makes uh, this one, that makes a difference. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, there is, there is still that notion in, especially in, in commercials. Yeah. The client always comes there and they want to see this big production that they got going. It's like, this is what our money got us. This is a really big camera. I find it's more when there's an agency in between. Exactly. Especially the agency, yeah. yeah. Get as many tripods you can have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, put Even up, the just put up tripods put and cameras there. that are not rolling yeah. and they're happy. Yeah, yeah it, it is an issue. But then, then again, like we manage to get a relationship with clients that they buy us not for a certain production value but for certain certain style and certain aesthetic that we that we produce and then we have our methods you know. i think the technology is also bringing down the i mean you know like even clients are more aware of what's oh, possible yeah. yeah i mean that on the other hand means that sometimes they want a lot more than what you can do for something uh, but also it means they are sometimes more realistic um, in terms of what's possible and uh, you know sometimes you don't need the middleman anymore I would say yeah still you need to know what to do like kind of sometimes a client saying oh I yeah. pay you that much money but why you just show up with a little camera it's like because you're paying for uh, <laughs> like my knowledge yeah. I have and my experience I have to do something out of this camera I can do it with a big camera a shitty thing and with a small camera it's something good so some clients understand some some don't but um, yeah it's, it's, I, I think it's worth to try to explain it because, like you said, they, they know that there are kind of tools out there yeah. you can use. Like, yeah, I, I showed a wedding on my cell phone. So it's like, why is it that expensive? Yeah. It's like, well, well, there are some solutions, but still you need to know how to do some th stuff. 
What I like about small cameras is that it's changing storytelling in the sense of it gives us a sign that there's new options that we need to embrace how, <coughs> how technology simplifies the process for us. And by becoming smaller, uh, and we can disappear into the stories and we can um, be, in a way, a participating audience in some form. And I think every time an interesting tool comes out, it's good to say to other filmmaker friends, hey, you should check this out, because it's going to simplify your life. And it's going to and simplify your life, not just a matter of budget-wise, or it's going to save you days and save you time from getting close to your subject. And the camera that you do the research with is actually the camera you also do the film with. So you might be able to mix that material. That's a good point as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the I think the there is a line in the entire industry that uh, allows you to explore these tools to their various degree. And, uh, and, um, and I think it's something filmmakers need to embrace uh, because perhaps this kind of, there's, of course, different types of filmmaking where you need the artificiality and sometimes perhaps you need to announce we're making a film. But I think in the, in, maybe when you're coasting an independent uh, cinema, uh, let's say European independent cinema, or anywhere else in the world, even more perhaps, uh, you need the freedom to be able to do things without announcing them necessarily, and then slowly seducing people into joining you into the process, like pos positively seducing. Um, by showing that it's not intimidating. And if the technology is not intimidating and it's playful, then other people are uh, very easily start just playing. And they forget about the technology. And if you work alone and if you do more like uh, essayistic or artistic kind of documentaries and um, it reduces the obstacles that are in your way. Though you leave the apartment because you have this very simple solution and otherwise you would take all of this material and you would just not go. And I think it's always good the camera that brings you to actually shoot something is always better than all the best technique that you have and at the end use it at home because right. it's too much and it's too complicated. If you don't need to think about it too much, it's really yeah. better than the better than the high end. It's my case I have at home right now. I have a cinema camera, but I feel like back in the days I shot way more than I shoot now because now it, it's like seven kilo and then I have the tripod getting bigger and it's like all the accessories getting bigger. And so it's, it's taking more energy to go out and shoot something. And, and to be honest, we, you, we don't get younger. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> the point. And also one aspect what is important to say about the, the, the smaller technology and the cheaper technology, it opened the doors for really creative people who never had access to this, especially like in countries maybe where, they, where it's a problem to purchase a camera like this. So you're talking about aspirational technology, which means like people who weren't able to afford the tools of our trade uh, are now able to, you know, have yeah. a actually very high-end tool yeah. for not that much money. Yeah, exactly. So, like those days, you're seeing like really talented filmmakers raising up from from India, from Philippines, from from everywhere, South America. And to be honest, sometimes in in in, in our countries or in film schools, you you see that people. They try to make it perfect. They're looking for the perfect crew. They're looking for the perfect setup. They're looking for the perfect camera and anything. There's no argument today. If you really have to have a story you want to tell, you can do it. You just can take a small camera and you can you can do it. The, the best documentaries I ever watched, they was made with a small camera. This, it wasn't like a big cinema camera. And the good thing is it doesn't like, I think we need to get past that idea of uh, conflicting technology and it's like, oh, it's not real because you got all this gear and, you know, it's just, just go out and make a darn film, <laughs> you know, do, do something. It's this over glorification of uh, cinematic style on images, you know, the whole hype being, I just want it to look cinematic. Like, why don't you just want it to look like your story? 
And the funny thing, what does that even mean? Because yeah. I, I remember when exactly. DSLRs came out, of course, everybody was shooting everything with the most shallow depth of field yeah. possible <laughs> because it just was not attainable beforehand. Yeah. It was just extremely expensive yeah, to do that. Nothing was in focus. <laughs> exactly. And suddenly nothing, nothing was in focus. And you could always recognize these films on Vimeo yeah. because the audio was terrible because everybody used yeah. the internal terrible microphone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the difference you could see. And, and if you look at Hollywood films, yeah. most of them are shot at an f-stop of 5.6 yeah. yeah they don't exactly. even open it up more exactly. because they want stuff to be in focus yeah. <laughs> uh, so and that's you know but it's and then you know like but it's always trends as well it's like yeah. uh, after the time lapses and, and, yeah, and the drones like, now it's the like, drones yeah. now so it's, it comes in waves i guess yeah thanks for watching this segment of our roundtable discussion with filmmakers here in copenhagen in the next segment we're going to talk about how content creation is actually being changed because of the available technology thanks for watching you